Welcome uh, to this uh, broadcast this afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Fred Popo. I'm a consultant medical oncologist at the Cancer Institute. Today we'll be talking about prostate cancer, which is a, a big problem in the country, and also worldwide, and also a big problem in Africa. It is uh, emerging as the communist cancer in Africa. Uh, communist cancer in Uganda among men, and uh, the incidence and the trends are going up every other day. It can affect both young people and elderly men. Uh, before I take you through what the prostate is, I would like to show you a diagram of the prostate. And in here is a cross-section of a, a man. This is a cross-section of a man, like half of the man. And I want to take you through this. As you see here, this is called the rectum. And I want to draw your attention. This is the organ. Uh, this is the organ uh, that is the last bit of your large intestine, what we call the colon. So your stool exits through here. Next uh, to that, in the front of this organ, you have that uh, orange or pinkish um, organ. That's what we call the prostate. Just above the prostate is the bladder. This is the urinary bladder. This is where your urine collects. And uh, when you follow this bladder, there is an exit from the bladder that we call the urethra, and it continues to exit through your penis, and that's how the urine gets out of your body. Just besides the penis is what we call the gonad or the testis. Uh, some people call it the testicle, but uh, medically we call this the gonad. Um, the reason why I'm showing you this is that this, all these are interconnected. These are interconnected and there is a reason why they are interconnected. So when you look closely, there is a purple line that goes through here and comes right up to the testis. And uh, I would like you to follow that line and, uh, and try to see why it is connected. So the prostate is a tiny organ that you cannot see you can only feel it the doctor can feel it and how does the doctor feel your prostate is accessing through the rectum because of that proximity so the doctor puts a finger through your anus to the rectum to feel the size of the prostate to see to feel whether the prostate has nodules in it and whether the prostate is tender all those are important because it's an organ that is an internal organ that is hidden between many structures but the doctors can access and feel it secondly let's talk about the function of this organ the function of the prostate is to produce a liquid that liquid is important for reproduction because that liquid has contained some constituents that are required to empower your eggs the male eggs or the sperms as they call them. And so there is an organ that we call the seminovesico, that's the purple organ there, that releases a liquid, okay? That liquid joins what comes from the, your testis or the testicles. So you can see this is your testicle here that contains your eggs and they are drawn through that purple duct there and it comes over and when it reaches here it is joined by another organ called the seminal vesicle and that liquid your eggs that are coming from your testes plus the liquid coming from the the vesicles all come and join in through the the prostate and remember that all that connection also connects to the urethra so at one point only the liquid will be allowed, only, all the eggs will be allowed to flow. At one point, only the urine can be allowed to flow. So the system is interconnected to your gonads. And that is the reason why the prostate is very important reproductive, male reproductive organ. It is important to say that without a prostate, you cannot have fertility. Man cannot be fertile without a prostate because it has that fertility role. 
also the prostate um, through the prostate is the exit of the urethra so it's the exit of your urine so many times when the prostate has issues you're sick or the prostate is sick it will affect your urine flow that's the whole reason why i am showing you this diagram to see how the two are connected and also it can affect your stool so when the prostate is sick it may extend to the rectum and that may cause constipation so you can see all the system and how things are connected the other thing you need to know is this is the spinal cord it's also connected to your prostate the proximity of the spinal cord so many patients who have advanced prostate cancer also will have it spread to the spinal cord so you can see how the bone the interconnection of the spinal cord the rectum the seminal vesicle the testis or the testicle the urethra the bladder they are all connected in one area and uh, they are all usually will be affected when the prostate has problems so that's a simple background of the role of the prostate gland very important gland without the prostate gland you cannot have children so what happens when you grow this prostate gland also keeps growing uh, from the age 20 scientists have uh, documented that they, it starts to grow and expand and by the age of 50 it has become significantly bigger and that is when men start to have the symptoms of urine and so on i should also mention that prostate cancer starts strictly within the prostate gland it doesn't start anywhere else why is the prostate gland prone to cancer well there are many reasons why uh, some infections in there that go on in the prostate gland some family history of cancer also uh, can predispose individuals to develop prostate cancer remember that also that cancer can also spread to the bladder which is just an organ above uh, the prostate now let's talk about uh, the symptoms that will affect a man with a cancer within the prostate or an enlarged prostate so there are two main conditions that can affect a man um, a man may just have a huge prostate an enlarged prostate and that will start affecting his flow of urine that one we call an enlarged prostate or medically uh, we call it prostatic enlargement or benign prostatic enlargement some people like to call it prostatic benign prostatic hyperplasia however it makes sense to call it benign prostatic enlargement so that organ becomes big and it has no cancer in it it just becomes big and enlarged and it starts to obstruct the flow of urine and when it obstructs the flow of urine from the bladder there will be reverse flow the urine goes and stagnates within the bladder and when the urine stagnates within the bladder the urinary bladder the urine bladder starts to get irritated infections so the bacteria begin to multiply within the obstruction the obstructed urine so that's a common condition that happens so you get what we call a cystitis cystitis is when the wall of the bladder is inflamed or infected and when the wall of the bladder is inflamed or infected it starts to irritate the gentleman wants to pass you very frequently or he might actually have blood coming from the bladder so he passes urine which is bloody or he's passing urine frequently because the bladder wall is irritating so it wants to empty everything whatever is in there so those conditions of an enlarged prostate are similar to conditions when the prostate has cancer so this these problems that affect the bladder and the prostate are very similar whether somebody has cancer and whether somebody has no cancer however when somebody has cancer cancer has a habit of growing and spreading so it starts to grow and spread and it starts to cause symptoms so in a situation where somebody has cancer you may see some blood in urine this is when it's advanced you may see uh, obstruction of urine um, you may have it spread to those organs that i have mentioned the bladder 
the rectum, the bones or the spinal cord, and the other tissues in the neighborhood. So men will have symptoms related with that. Or it may also cause erectile dysfunction. So a man might have erectile dysfunction due to prostate cancer because as I've shown you the anatomy and the proximity of the testicles and the ducts and the seminal vesicles, they are all within the same proximity. So sometimes erectile dysfunction is a symptom of prostate cancer and that is usually when the prostate cancer is late. So I have mentioned that symptoms of an enlarged prostate can be similar to symptoms of a prostate that has cancer. So very important to note that the symptoms are similar. A man might have similar symptoms, but it may not be cancer. So there are some tests that can be done. Most doctors, when they are evaluating a patient who has a prostatic problem, they will put a finger through the rectum. I will show you how that looks like on one of my images here. Um, So a dictorectal exam um, is an exam like, let me show you on this image. So this is the rectum and I was mentioning the proximity. I think you can see the prostate there. That's the bladder over there. And that's the testis over there. And this is the urethra over there. So when the doctors want to feel your prostate, the first thing they do is to feel the consistency of the prostate. So they insert a finger through your rectum, like you see that finger there. And that test is called a dictorectal exam. They'll be able to see whether there is tenderness in the, in the prostate, whether there is pain, whether there are nodules, and whether the prostate is enlarged. So that is one of the tests that the doctor must do if he's evaluating a patient suspected to have prostate cancer. The other uh, test is the doctor may do a blood test called the PSA, that is one of the other tests. And the other test that the doctor may do is imaging test. They do an ultrasound of the prostate including the bladder and the neighboring structures. In that ultrasound he'll be looking for whether there, there's enlargement, whether there is urine retention, and whether there are signs of uh, cancer within the prostate and whether that cancer is spreading and uh, spreading within the, the neighboring organs. So those tests can help the doctor to determine which patient should he start investigating for prostate cancer. And if those three have abnormalities, normally those three, an imaging test, which will use will be an ultrasound, a digital rectal exam, like you see there, and a blood test called a PSA, those increase the sensitivity of making a diagnosis, uh, an initial diagnosis of prostate cancer. So most patients will be counseled to have at least those three tests. If you have one of those tests, they may not be good enough to reveal prostate cancer. So you need all those tests together. Um, there are men who come with obvious prostate cancer, they may not need to go through all these tests that I've mentioned uh, because sometimes it is very obvious. Uh, the cancer is advanced, it is going to the bones and everywhere, uh, and it's very obvious. So, uh, prostate cancer treatment.